Hey everyone, I haven't posted an update in a little while, so I thought I'd uh, go into a little bit about what I've been working on. And this week I've basically been trying to work on the engine. Um, I got the engine delivered and I and on the stand a week and a half or two weeks ago, and I've been working slowly on uh, getting things together on it. One of the things that I'm really finding is that it, it takes a whole lot of calendar time to build an engine, not just hours. Um, and a lot of the reason for that is because to do this correctly, a lot of the things you don't really find out what exactly you need until you get into it. But, so let me go into that in a bit. So, base engine is a uh, 351 short block that I got rebuilt by ATK. And so far, um, Everything looks to be good and happy with the purchase. Uh, the heads are Edelbrock Performers, which I got off of my first parts car. Um, I'm using the recommended uh, Felpro head gaskets, and um, I've also got the recommended Felpro intake gaskets, um, and those are recommended by Edelbrock. Um, so I guess I'll just start off with the heads here. So I got the heads. Um, back from the machine shop a couple of weeks ago and everything lo looks good on them. So what I started off by doing was putting the heads on, putting the camshaft in, putting a couple of lifters in. I got all the lifters in now. And then uh, checking the piston to valve clearance. So this is something that's really a good idea to do. And I'm not going to go into details about how to do it because there's a bunch of videos on it. But basically, um, the, the short version is, what I did was, um, you can't really see, but the valve springs, and these are the stock valve springs from Edelbrock, are actually a dual spring. So I took the outer spring out, put the inner spring on, and then I thought that'd be good. Problem then was that um, the inner spring would uh, only compress to about 5 point, or, or 0 0.575 inches. And with the 1.7 rockers, um, I'm at about 507 inches. So there's a bunch of different opinions on how much piston to valve clearance you need, but I was shooting for a hundred thousandths or better, so obviously I couldn't really measure that towards the upper lift of the cam. So what I did then was I just took off the valve springs altogether and uh, just made sure that I didn't drop the, the, the valve into the piston. Anyway, um, I then uh, used my little adjustable push rod. You can buy these in any sort of length that you want. Um, got it to a zero valve lash and uh, did the checking and I have, I, I have over a hundred thousandths of clearance. ATK told me I, that uh, it's always a good idea to check but with these dished pistons that this engine has, you, you almost never run into issues. So with that set, I put the springs back on torqued both of the heads down to the specs that Edelbrock provided. Um, I've got the spark plugs in there. And Edelbrock recommends Champion spark plugs, so I, I just went with what they recommended. And you can see that uh, one of them, um, the end broke off. Oops, so i got to get another one on the way. Um, other stuff I did was, uh, like I said, I, I got the camshaft in, and this is the ISKI. 381333 solid roller cam, uh, solid flat tappet camshaft, and I've got the ISKI lifters in there as well. Made sure to put it in with the uh, provided assembly lube. Really important, especially on a flat tappet cam, to have a sent, have the correct assembly lube. Um, flat tappet cams need that for getting the proper break in um, wear pattern. So that's all set and ready to go, and. Um, I went with, uh, I'm going with a gear drive rather than a timing chain. My reason for that is basically because I'm trying to eliminate all slop from the engine. And timing chains, of course, have very little slop, but there's just a little bit. I've also just never used a gear drive before, so I thought it'd be fun. This is the Summit Racing uh, gear drive set. It's the quiet version for what that's worth. Um, so it's, it's supposed to be... Gear drives are normally very loud. Um, this is supposed to be a quiet, be a bit quieter. 
obviously I haven't put the bolt on yet. Um, I'm ordering an ARP bolt for that, but right now I just have it in place um, while I'm checking uh, more clearances and things like that. Um, then tonight what I was working on was figuring out what length push rod I need to order. Um, I've got kind of the worst setup when it comes to getting uh, the, the rockers adjusted. So I've got a um, solid flat tappet cam. So I have to set the valve lash manually. Um, the, the lifters will not, unlike a hydraulic lifter that'll kind of, to a certain extent, automatically set the valve lash. Um, you can't go too far with that, of course, but it'll do it within a reasonable amount. These, uh, these are completely manual. And I have these pedestal mount rockers. So you can kind of see if you aren't familiar, basically old style rockers, you could loosen them and tighten them to get the valve lash adjusted. Um, stud, those are called stud type and you can still buy them, but I had these nice crane cams, 1.7 to one ratio roller tip rockers. So I wanted to use these. And um, so for these, if to adjust the height of them, uh, or to adjust the valve lash without the push rod, you have to put spacers in underneath um, where the bolt uh, goes through into the head. So I'm hoping that I don't have to mess around with that too much. Um, when I measured it, um, I'm going to need about an 8.1 inch uh, push rod. What I really measured was 8.104, but that's a hair on the tight side. So I think 8.1 should probably work about right. What I'm gonna do is order a set of those, measure, and then if I have any that are too loose or too tight for my specs, I'll, I'll probably order a couple of one-off push rods for those uh, specifically. But one of the things I, I talked to uh, the folks at ISKI, and one of the reasons I really like ISKI cams is that they camshafts are all they do, and they're, um, they're really a good old school company. I actually gotten to talk to Ed Iskandarian when he was still alive um, about camshafts for my one of my V12 Jaguars, um, I guess probably about 15 years ago or so. And um, so I called up for the tech for tech support and the person the, the man I talked to sounded like uh, an older gentleman who'd been doing this a long time. And the question that I had for him was um, that uh, I, I felt like I probably got a cam that might have been a hair on the small side for a 351 and should I um, should I install the cam a few degrees retarded because with this um, with this summit gear set if you take a look you can see that there's a, a hole for the keyway here up here on top and then there's one on the other side and you can pick each one of those keyways um, for either straight up four degrees advanced or four degrees retarded. Um, if you look, if you look up the details about how cam timing affects performance, if you retard the camshaft, it'll actually move the um, the power band up in RPM. And so th this cam's a little on the small side for a 351, but um, so I wanted to get their input. And what the man I I spoke to said was that he wouldn't change the cam timing at all. He said the 1.7 to 1 rockers are going to help me because they spec the cams for 1.6 rockers, so I got a little bit more lift out of that, and I knew that already. Um, but the other thing he said was that um, the valve lash spec on these is 22 thousandths, and he said that um, if, I, if I just want to run the valve lash a hair tighter, and instead of 22 thousandths aim for 18 or, or even 14, he said he wouldn't go lower than 14 that that would be um, that that would basically give me a little bit of extra duration a little bit of extra lift and that he thought that would probably um, balance it out really well for a 351 so so that's what I'm gonna aim for um, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you have aluminum heads you actually you're, when you have valve lash valve lash is supposed to be measured when the engines hot and um, alu with aluminum heads on an iron block, you want your cold valve lash to be tighter. Uh, one reference I saw said tighter by about six thousandths than what you than what you what you want on the hot side. So I, I took that into account when I was looking at my uh, push rod lengths, and that's part of why I think the 8.1 inches will probably be just about right. 
So I'll order those and we'll see what those look like. Um, they're not, I'll, I'm going to make an order from Summit Racing tomorrow. So it'll show up sometime next week and um, maybe next time I'll have the, uh, the valve train together. Um, I haven't forgotten about those of you who've asked for, uh, an up, for a, a more detailed review on the Speedmaster intake. Um, I'm going to get to that. I just haven't taken it out of the box again and um, I don't want to put it on the engine until I get at least the... Uh, I want to at least get the um, valve train together before I put it on the engine just so that I have easy access to the V in case anything falls in there. So that's about all for tonight. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more. And um, I guess the other thing I'll let you know is that uh, I do hope to put the mid-shift kit into my TKO sometime before too long. Um, my goal for this week was to get the engine assembled and made into the transmission and ideally in the car. Obviously that's not going to happen, but um, hopefully I can get some more progress done. So thanks again for watching and uh, see you next time.